Hello and welcome to the Federal. I am Apramaya Sri of the Federal. Chennai is set to host the 44th Chess Olympiad from July 28 to August 10. This is for the first time that India is hosting this event. Ahead of this mega tournament, we are joined by India's first international master, Manuel Aran. Mr. Aran has inspired many youngsters to take up chess. As of July 17 this year, India has 1,10,477 players in the FIDE rating list and has outnumbered Russia, which has 1,6,209 players in the FIDE rating list. Mr. Aaron was born in Burma in 1935. During the Second World War, when he was six years old, his family and along with him moved to India. Even today, at the age of 86, he continues to serve the game, coaching youngsters in Chennai and writing about the sport in his magazine Chessmate, which will complete 40 years next month, August. Uh, Mr. Aaron is a nine-time national champion, played in three Olympiads. He has served as the secretary of the All India Chess Federation two times and was also the Tamil Nadu Chess Association general secretary for several terms. Today, Tamil Nadu has emerged as the powerhouse of chess in India and Mr. Aaron's contribution to the state is enormous. He founded the Tal Chess Club in 1972 in Chennai. It was named after former world champion Mikhail Tal and operated inside the Soviet Cultural Center. Five-time world champion Vishwanathan Anand during his younger days attended Mr. Aaron's lectures on chess and immensely benefited from them. Mr. Aaron has also authored books on chess, including Indian chess history. Sir, thanks uh, for talking to the Federal again. I welcome you, sir. It's a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, let, me begin, let me begin by asking you about uh, this huge event coming up uh, in Chennai from tomorrow, that is July 28th, uh, Chess Olympiad, 44th Chess Olympiad. You are one of the pioneers of the game in India. And how does it feel, sir? India is hosting this mega event. And what does this mean to Indian chess, sir, and you? You see, there are three team, three men team and three women team. That is about 15 each. That is 30 players are going to play for India in this Olympiad. And they are from different parts of India. From Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Hyderabad, Patras, everywhere. Chavantram and all that. But uh, see, the people who live there in those different places, they associate themselves with the place from their region. For example, S.L. Narayanan from um, Kerala. The Kerala players will all look to see how he is faring in the Olympiad and what he is doing. Same way, people from Calcutta, they will be looking at uh, Calcutta players and Delhi players will look at people like uh, Tanya Sachsev. And of course, from Madras, you have this uh, um, Sasikiran, Adiban, they are all participating for the Olympian for different teams, two different teams. And then you also have um, Bidith Gujarati from Nashik in Maharashtra. So the people there also will be interested in knowing how uh, Vidith Gujarati's team is, uh, favor is, favor uh, for, uh, is finding its feet in the Olympian, whether they are doing well or bad and all that. So because of there are 30 players and it's spread all over the country, the, it's likely that more people will be interested in uh, watching the Olympiad and rooting for their own uh, people. And incidentally, the team of Indian team. Great, sir. Sir, you must be very happy, sir. Chennai is hosting uh, this mega event, sir, because uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, as we all know, it's a powerhouse in chess, number one in the terms of players registered in the country, sir. Yes, uh, we have more chess players, more grandmasters, more international masters, more grandmasters, international arbiters than any other state. So we are the leaders in so many things. And we also, our history also goes back way, way back. I think the association was started in 1947 on 26th April, long before India got its independence. But then, of course, it was called Madras Chess Club. Now it's Tamil Nadu State Chess Association, but it evolved all those days. And there are many players who have come uh, playing for that, uh, for the country, like, uh, for example, uh, uh, Ravi Kumar, he was also from Chennai, Ravi Shekhar, he was also from Chennai, Parmeswan, uh, myself, Natarajan, we all played for, uh, I think we all, most of us have played for in the Olympiad at some point or other. I played in 1960, 62, and 64. And I was also the manager of the team in 86 in Dubai. So 
many of us have been to the Olympiad. I think Ravi Shekhar has been to quite a few times. He's now settled in Bangalore, but he is still a Tamil Nadu player. And he has played for India in the Olympiad. And so also has Parameshan. And many other players have taken part in it. Great, sir. Sir, uh, could you tell us, uh, tell our viewers, like your journey, sir, uh, it is an interesting journey and you have a lot of anecdotes to share, sir, from your journey from Burma to Tamil Nadu and how you started playing chess, sir. Please. Well, I learned chess by watching my parents play. They used to play chess at home. So I would just watch them play and somehow I don't remember anybody Teach, telling me move the knight like this, the bishop moves like this. Nobody, I don't remember anybody telling me that. So I just acquired it by watching my parents play. And uh, then I used to read the newspapers. At the time, during World War II, in 1941, December, we came to, back to India from Burma. And at that time, the World War II was raging. And we were actually driven out of Mong Burma by the Japanese. And uh, so I was keen to know what happened. Well, even at the age, early age of six years old, I used to read the newspapers to find out what's the progress of the war. And, uh, and when you read the newspaper, we also had there's a chess column in the newspaper. So that also attracted me. So that's how we got very much interested in chess. And uh, it was my grandfather also used to play chess. So I never met my grandfather, but I know that he played. My uncles, my father, my other, many of us have played. And... Uh, it sort of runs in the family. Um, but in the olden days, uh, chess was very, very primitive. Now, in the 1950s, the headquarters of the State Chess Association was in Chennapuri Andhra Sala, which is the Victoria Public Hall, uh, very close to Central Station, between Central Station and uh, Ripon Building, the corporation uh, office. So in between that, they had the Victoria Public Hall where the Chennapuri Andhra Sabha was uh, housed. And that's CAMS, as we call the Chennapuri Andhra Mahasa, was uh, more into uh, cards, bridge, and rummy, and uh, billiards, and also chess. Chess, of course, there were very few people played, but there were always a lot of people more for cards than for chess and billiards. So, but they, they allowed the association to function from there, and the association was housed in. Chennapuri Andhra Mahasabha, but at that time it was a central place, very close to the central station, so it's central. And at that time, uh, I remember the first time the Madras State Championship prize money was 100 rupees. First prize was 100, that's all. And the entry was something like 10 rupees, which was a big amount at that time, but 100 rupees was also a big amount at the time. And uh, in the national championship in 1950, uh, Five when you play the national championship for the first time, the uh, the national final championship, the prize money first prize was five hundred rupees. That's all. And uh, people go went and stayed in some lodges, not so well off and all that. And uh, we it was not ideal conditions during those days. I remember the nineteen seventy one, seventy one no seventy two seventy two national championship in Simla. It was held in the month of December, January. Extreme cold. And uh, we went by train from Madras to Delhi, Delhi to Kalka, Kalka to Shimla. And when we went there, we were really very tired. Then they showed us, there's a Kali, Kali Bari, Amman, uh, Kali Bari uh, temple was there. They said, this is your lodging. So we stayed there. At that time, we cannot never question anybody. If they give you the lodging, we just accept it. And... Now you, people will protest, they will protest and walk out and all that. But at that time, we were just pawns in the hand of the organizers. But when I went there, Kali Bariyaman, then to bathe in the morning, they gave, gave me a bucket of water. By the time I took to the bathroom and I changed my clothes and I touched the water, it was already no longer hot. It's already cold because the, the, it's fr so freezing outside. Then he came into the... Uh, actual place, the room, in which about three or four of us were uh, housed, uh, I lay down to sleep and they gave one rasai. You know, rasai is a thick sort of a uh, woolen something which you cover yourself. Blanket. They, Blanket. They, yeah. they call it rasai. In North India, they call it rasai. So they gave us one rasai. And, uh, I covered myself with the rasai. I knew about the rasai earlier because I had been to Delhi. In Delhi also, we have, we have played before. But there also you used to have Razai during winter. But 
this was one rasai was not enough i was still shivering under the one rasai so i went and told the organizer sansar chansu he was a secretary he was also a very good player but he was then becoming a organizer so i told him uh, mr sud i am going back i can't play here it is too cold for me then he said no 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 don't worry i'll get you another rasai so he got me a second rasai and then it was tolerable it was possible to sleep normally but during the whole tournament they you had a fire lit in the tournament hall so after making a move you go there and warm your hands that sort of a thing and the snow was falling for the first time in india chess players from south india were seeing snow okay okay, okay. and then uh, at the end of the uh, tournament we had uh, uh, the prize distribution was there but three of us tied for first so they didn't know who was the champion so they said there will be a match later on in after another three months in delhi they will resolve who will be the champion so they have it there but right now whatever they announced the prize they divided it and gave it to the three of us and after they gave that money they said you also have to pay for the extra rasai which they gave me you see okay so i i was about to go back because it was too cold then they said gave me one more rasai i thought it, it out of their generousness or out of the necessity i was not asking for something uh, luxury but it was necessary otherwise i cannot sleep so they gave me the rasai but then they billed me for it at the end they took it, took it away from the price so that was a condition that we had in those days nowadays nobody will think about that and uh, and then when you came to delhi delhi in 1972 by the time three months have gone and the delhi association organized the play off match between arun vaidya mohammad hasan and me we three of us tied for first and we were put up in gandhi peace foundation a nice place uh, it but was not a professional hotel or anything like that but it was okay everything was there the court was there everything was there fine and then we, we played the tournament and uh, and the thing was decided and here the prize money was increased to 2000 rupees delhi association increased it to 2000 rupees and uh, you know why <laughs> because there was a tonga race in delhi from uh, from karnat place to old delhi tongas used to play between Karnataka place and Old Delhi. So there, the prize money there was two thousand rupees. The Tonga race, first prize. So they said, <laughs> "Just turn up. At least this should be two thousand." So they made it two thousand. So that was the highest prize money they ever offered at that time. And at that time, they all also used to have many other tournaments in 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 Madras. And uh, there was a Kasturi Cup. Kasturi Cup uh, that comes from the Hindu. Kasturi Srinivasan was the president of the association for some time, and so there was a Kasturi Cup. And there they said we the the prize money the first prize would be only three hundred because they said oh, we cannot yeah. increase we cannot keep it on par with the national championship prize money. So the national championship is five hundred, so this will be three hundred. For many years it was like that. Five hundred was the national championship prize money, first prize, and uh, but we still played because. we thought we are the only chess players and we have to do, do something and it was something like we cannot do anything about it but long long afterwards only after i became the secretary of the, as a, of the asm in 87 when we had the, uh, the tournament in uh, uh, kurukshetra kurukshetra the players boycotted they said this this this, this is very bad conditions so when i was a player i suffered everything bad uh, cooperation bad price money and all that now when i was a secretary in 87 i was a chess player the only chess player who became a national player who became a secretary of the federation and they they struck they said we will not uh, play here and they boycotted the tournament so these are all things the highs and lows of my career you know? my own friends my own uh, friends who were my comrades in arms they 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 signed against me they didn't want to play this tournament Anand was also there. Anand did not sign. Anand was also in that Kurchetra tournament, but he did not sign. Okay. He, he went along with us. And, uh, so the, that tournament was cancelled, and later on it was held in Tumkur. 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 It was Tumkur. held in Tumkur. And uh, Anand won that tournament. So there were lots of things, but it, but the pro, but in uh, Tumkur it was improved. It was much better than what was offered in uh, Kurchetra. I must say it was really bad. But all along in our life, we always had suffered only with bad accommodation, bad things. Uh, but sometimes you have to 
Then there was another boycott in Pondicherry. There was a national championship in Pondicherry. Then also the players said they will not have. They said they'll go to court and all sorts of things. But finally, it all fizzled out. Some people boycotted. They were left the tournament. I think Thipse walked out. He didn't. Thipse continued, I think. But some other people, like Ravi Shekhar, they walked out. They will. They didn't go back to the tournament. So the tournament was. Sort of a mutilated tournament. Some people were there, some people were not there, but it was still a national championship. Uh, but nowadays, even recently, there was a national championship in Lucknow. There also they had the same problem. Then uh, uh, the players said they refused to play. Now that uh, who that that uh, Raisada was the secretary. I think he still is the secretary. I don't know. Raisada was the secretary. He had organized a national for all the. This was about uh, four years back, not very much later, only four years back. And uh, the players said they refused to play. Then at that time, uh, uh, the president was uh, Venkat Ramaraja. He was from, he's a Ramco, boss of Ramco. He's a, he was a, and he's a chess lover. So he made, he flew to Lucknow. He flew to Lucknow, he inspected the place and said, move to Five Star Hotel. And you sent me the bill. That's how he, he just solved it like that. It was possible for him to do it, that. But in our days, we, we did not think even of asking our president to help. And uh, But Vagat Ramaraja did a very good thing. He immediately said, everybody put everybody in the five-star hotel and you send me the bill. That's all. And we something happened like that here also when we were, the Win TV tournament was held. That's the first Chennai Open in Madras. The... The organizer said, uh, we will pay only for foreign grand masters and international masters. We will not pay for Indian uh, title holders. But that was ridiculous. But he had it in his mind that he must pay only for uh, the Russians and Americans and all that. He won't pay for Indians. But Indians also had to stay in the hotel. And they are also good players, probably better than the uh, visitors. And uh, there again, when this was brewing, I told Vagat Ramaraja, Vagat Ramaraja was the president, I was the secretary at the time of Tamil Nadu Association. It was, I think it was 2012 or 13 or something like that. Then he told, he said the same thing. Put them in some other hotel close by and send me the bill. That's all. He always, Vagat Ramaraja was a very good man in, in such things. And before him, the other, we always had very good presidents in the All India Chess Foundation as well as Tamil Nadu. The people who were the prisons were very good. I won't say that about the secretaries, but the prisons were really very good. And before him, Mahalingam. Mahalingam was the one, one who set standards for the chess administration. He said, no chess. When he was Tamil Nadu president, he's, he learned that some, some team members went to play in the national championship at their own cost. He said, how is it? Are we not paying? I said, no, we are not paying. We don't have the money. Then he told me, always... Tamil Nadu players should go only national championship only at our expense. Only the state association will pay for their travel and entry fee and boarding and lodging if it's not offered by the uh, host association. So, and if the, if you don't have the money, you ask me. I'm the president. You have to ask me. And he then told me, I was the secretary, he was the president. He said, a president should never say that he has no money and a secretary should never say he has no time. This was, this was a mantra that he established, uh, Dr. Mahalingam. He's a great oh. man. And, he, and his wisdom was there in everything. He doesn't mean that he'll just throw away his money. But you'll see how you can get it from making some adjustments with other people and other companies. He's, he had many companies. And all the companies will pull in somehow or the other and we'll get things done. So that's how difficult times were there before. And always there will be some conflict in chess and in any sport, there will be some conflict, and chess is no uh, exception to it. And we still pull on. Now, Olympiads are coming. World Championship was held in 2013 between Anand and uh, Carlsen. Now, Carlsen is coming to play as a captain of the Norwegian team. Not captain, oh, no. he's a part of the Norwegian team. I don't know whether he's captain or not, because sometimes they have somebody else as a captain. But in our time, uh, when we played in 1960, Two sixty. 60, Olympiad, I was the captain. I was number one, board number one, I was the captain. And it was only the players who were the captain, not other people. But now it's the fashions to put somebody else. And uh, this Olympiad, of course, we have lots of chances for our players to uh, prove themselves. And uh, uh, 
But just because we are higher seat doesn't mean that we will win. And just because we are not the first seat, it doesn't mean that we will not win. We can still win if you are not in the first seat. And we can still lose if you are the first seat. Anything can happen in sports. And uh, it all depends on the willpower of the team. And as such, you know, how they fight for uh, glory. And that's very important. And there are players like Sasikiran, for example. Sasikiran is a very good team player. You always root for the team, you try to see that all the, even though he's not the captain, you he, he'll want to make sure that everybody performs best and they do their best. He was never captain, but he's very good at it. And it's the sort of a loyalty to his uh, comrades, the, the team members. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinarily good. You know, sometimes a good player, you think, oh, I am too high above them. I won't even talk with other people. But it's not like that. But many of us are like that. So many of us, it's good that we don't, we mix with everybody, whether, because every team will have one low-rated player and one high-rated player. Whoever wins a point, he gets one point for the country. Not because mm -hmm. the top player will get one point, not the bottom player will not. Both of them will get the same one point if they win a game. So they're all important. And uh, the team management will have to keep everybody happy. And uh, nobody should be disgruntled. And, uh, because I know in the past, when uh, 1984 Olympia, Mitra Gandhi and Avin, uh, Arun Vaidya were in the team, Indian team. There were six member team at the time in Thess Thessaloniki. Uh, Gufel was a coach. And Gufel, Gufel is a Russian. Ernest Gufel is a Russian grandmaster, Soviet grandmaster. He was a coach and he was the fellow who decides who will play and who will not play in every round. At that time, he had great confidence in Tipse and Ravishegar and one more, one more person. But he did not want. He did not want uh, Mitragant and uh, Vaidya. So he did not play them at all. So these two people were there in the Olympia. They did not play a single game for many days. And they were getting annoyed. Oh, and they were angry. Mm -hmm. Very, very angry. And, uh, and uh, Ufel's uh, position was that uh, these two people are nothing compared to the other people. But both of them became international masters afterwards. After this Olympia, they both became international masters. So they had the capacity, but Gufel did not see it. That same thing will happen with other people also, people who are not actually uh, in the team, who are not playing with them in the tournaments and all of that. Now, Anand plays with, um, Anand plays with, uh, with in tournaments with Hari Krishna, Vidhik Gujarati and all that in Europe. So they know each other very well and they know what is the strength and weaknesses. But uh, but a fourth person who comes in as a, or a fifth person, sixth person who comes in as a um, captain or a manager who decides all these things, who will uh, play or who will not play, they may not uh, have the right, uh, may not take the right decision. They may be wrong. And it may badly influence the morale of the team. Because if two people are disgruntled and they're angry, the other people will know it, that these two people are unhappy. Because, and they are also wanting to rest, but they will not be rested. Because Goofer thinks that only these fellows will bring points, these fellows will not bring points. But these okay. are people, every, almost many of the coaches are like that. They will say, this fellow should not be there, that should, fellow should not be there. And all. But then, you know, plays among themselves, they know who's good, who's not good. But the coaches generally don't know. Uh, when Kramnik came into the Olympiad team for the first time, I think Olympiad was in Manila, 1992, uh, Kramnik had not qualified from the Soviet Union to play in the Olympiad. But Kasparov was there as their top man. He was not the captain, but he had a great influence. He said, no, you have to put Kramnik. He insisted on putting Kramnik in the team. Okay. And Kramnik did very well, extra, extraordinarily well. Because he was on the recommendation of Kasparov, but Kasparov knew the inherent capacity of Kramnik to win games. But others may not know. Because Kramnik, Kasparov, they all played. They see each other play tournaments and they know what they are doing. And they know what, how strong, strong they really are. And, and in times of crisis, how they react. Whereas a coach who just comes and reads the newspaper and comes, you will not know what's happening. And he may not also be in a very competitive frame of mind, the coach the, or the captain of the team, whoever I say. So the captain has got team has got a very good responsibility to ensure that everybody is happy. That every, nobody thinks that he's been overlooked 
or if you over, you have to overlook what you try to tell him that this is a circumstance, this is something like this, you explain to him so that he doesn't carry you carry out his frustrations anywhere else. And I remember Thessaloniki, Arun Vaidya, he said uh, uh, there was a in Thessaloniki when he, when he saw that he was not playing even after so many times, there was some big drum. He just went and hit it with his hand. Big mm -hmm. noise and all that. So that sort of frustration will come. Don't let that happen. Everybody should be and fortunately, we have only five members now, not six. So only one person. And some no. countries, they'll always see that everybody gets equal number of games. Some of them are 11 rounds in this Olympia. 11, uh, 11 rounds, there'll be four games. There. So 44 games will be there in totally. If one player wanted to play all the games, he'll play 44. But you do what you do is you 40, 44, you divide by five. So that's uh -huh. the number of games that everybody should get. So they get the equal number of games. But the match, the captain will can say, well, they are not equal. One is superior. One is uh, one is very lowly rated. That's how it goes. But even if you're lowly rated, as I tell you, Kramnik was lowly rated. But Kaspar trusted him that he will do well. And he did well because they know each other. But these people who are not connected with the players, who don't go and play in tournaments where they are playing, he doesn't know that. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, uh, could you talk us about uh, when you saw Viswanathan Anand as the youngster and uh, he attended your lectures and he posed a lot of questions to you and later you both played and I think he defeated you once or twice or maybe three times, I think, as you mentioned. Uh, clear somewhere. So, could you tell us about that, sir? Your interactions uh, uh, with uh, young Anand and uh, what were your impressions back then? You see, in 1977, I I learned foreign languages because I thought I, if I learn foreign languages, I can uh, understand magazines, read magazines, chess magazines, and enrich my yes. uh, chess knowledge. So, I studied German first, and I went to Leipzig Olympiad. I came back, I immediately I fell in love with Germany. And I I enrolled myself with Max Müller Bauman and studied German language. I got a diploma in German. Then, okay. then I found that there are more literature, more things coming up from Russia than from anybody else, any other country. So I wanted to learn Russian. So that's how I went to... Uh, I went enrolled myself in the uh, Soviet Cultural Center in Madras. Soviet Cultural Center. Now they call it Russian Cultural Center, but at the time it was Soviet Cultural Center. I learned, I learned Russian from there. I got a lot of magazines, Russian magazines, Shakmatvi, SSSR, and uh, 64, and other magazines came. They came freely. So I used to give translations of that for the public. I used to put it in the uh, newspaper that there will be a lecture on such a day at this time. And about some 20 people, 15 to 20 people will come for the meeting. And uh, Anand will be one of them. And he will okay, ask okay. me a lot of questions about... And at that time, he was about 8 or 9. That's all. He was 1977. He was born in 69. About 8. 8 or 9. Yeah. So he'll ask me. He'll cross-examine me. You know, I'll give him... I'll, I'll just... I'm I'm not this... this what I'm showing them is not my own uh, theory. Not my own analysis. I'm translating what the Russian grandmasters have published in their magazine and giving it to our people. So he will ask me, why not this? Why not that? And sometimes I can answer why, why, but there are times when I cannot understand. I cannot answer, mm -hmm. because I do not know myself, because his question is bad. Oh, yeah. So at that time, I knew that this boy will become great, but I never thought he will become world champion. But at that time, you know, we, when you saw a little boy, with a squeaky voice, he asked you, Uncle, why not this? Uncle, why not that? You, you, you feel okay. like that. You don't think you'll become world champion, but you become really world champion, of which we are all very happy. And he, and three times I uh, played with him in the tournament, and all the three times I had better position, but all the three times he beat me. So that means he was a oh, fast no. player to me, because I could, I could catch him in the opening, but the middle game, he can catch me. So he was a far superior player to me in those days when he was not even IM. And I was already IM. He was not even IM, but he was superior, playing better than me. So there are about three occasions in which I lost to him. I played only three times. I lost all the three. And I know he's a good, great player. And he is a great player. And probably he's still a great player. 
I don't know why he doesn't yeah. why he's become a mentor. Yeah. Mentor for the team. Okay. Sir, yeah. Sir, could you talk about the Tal Chess Club, which you started in 1972, right, sir? And you said you had to wind up because of the Soviet Union collapsed uh, during that time. You had to wind up that and it still exists as in some other name. Yeah. Could you talk us through about that, sir? You see, in Madras, there were no regular clubs. Uh, pockets of chess players will assemble in certain places. In the 50s and 60s, it was Chennaburi Andhra Mahasabha. But sometimes they go, they don't know whether the chess player will be there or not. So they used to take a chance and go and play there. The YMCA was another place. But YMCA was even dimmer than the CAMS. But then there was a place in Mailapur called the Mailapur Chess Club, where, where they used to sit in one house, that's Swala Subramanian house. They used to sit and play chess on the, on the floor. Uh, but that's in, a, it's in Mailapur. Mailapur is a sort of a center for South Madras. And uh, uh, I've also been there once or twice. Uh, uh, and no, so there was no fixed place where you can meet and play chess. And when I learned Russian, I was learning Russian in the Russian culture, uh, so use, uh, Soviet Council, cultural center. They were asked by there, I think they were asked by Moscow to extend cooperation with the Indians in other fields, in different fields. So they thought uh, I was the national champion. I was studying Russian in their world. Why not we start a chess club there? I said, they asked me, I said, yes, we'll do it. And so that's how it came. And we thought about uh, uh, Tal Chess Club as a name because I was a great admirer of Tal. I have great admiration for Tal and Fisher. So Tal Club is the name of the the thing and they gave everything free and uh, uh, the, the place was free. They got us chess clocks, chess sets, chess books, literature, and sometimes they brought in some uh, well-known players to come and play chess with uh, simultaneous displays and give talks, lectures with uh, our players in Tal Chess Club. And we also held some tournaments. The Indian Bank Open was quite often held in Tal Chess Club. Then the 1987, we held the uh, woman Grandmaster Tournament, Asian Woman Grandmaster Tournament, the first of its kind. The entire Asia was held in Tal Chess Club in '87, uh, but we didn't do well. Uh, Indians, Indian women didn't do well. We, I, mostly the Soviet bloc countries they did well. So 14 player tournament, small tournament. So, and when I started the Tal Chess Club, I was a founder president. I I said our objective should be to produce a world champion within 15 years. So 72 plus 15 is 87, but we didn't produce a world champion in 87, but we produced a world junior champion because Anand became a world junior champion in 87. So we are, in a way, we were happy, but he's not a regular world champion, but world junior champion. But that was itself a great thing because we, before that, we never had a world junior champion. He was the first person to become a world junior champion. And he's the first person also to become a world champion from our country. See, there was a Shakmat okay, okay. chess in USSR. It's something else in Shakmat in SSSR, oh, they yeah. say. And Shakmat the Bulletin. Okay. These are two magazines which were very popular at the time. But the, 64 was more like a newspaper. It was actually a newspaper, not a not okay. radio magazine, but it was a weekly. And it was a newsprint and all that. And uh, it gave a lot of news, chess news. And uh, okay. some games are also there. But whereas Shakmat in SSSR and Shakman, the bulletin were purely professional magazines with giving the latest analysis, analysis of openings and end games and things like that. They were really very good. They, I think they're still coming. Okay. We, before we move ahead, I would like to request our viewers to subscribe to the federal YouTube channel for such uh, interviews. We'll just continue with uh, Aaron, sir. Sir, moving on, uh, do are, you must be happy with the way the state of chess is in the country uh, today. Like you were mentioning, like how tough it was when you started and now it has progressed rapidly, sir. Yeah, that's good. We have got so many grandmasters and so many international masters. Almost every day, somebody's, every month, somebody is becoming grandmaster or an international master. So it's very, very heartening. Maybe I think now our base is widened so much. The base is why so these things can come up. 
if the base is not wide, you may not have so many people coming up. Uh, so I think that we have more rated players in the whole entire world than any other country. So uh, Russia comes second, second us, but we second yeah. yeah we have we lead in the number of rated players, and uh, that is a good thing. And then so many people are playing, and you know in Tamil Nadu. Maybe even other states also, there's not a single chess player who's unemployed. They all make money out of chess. Oh, great. They all make money. They're all coaches. Everybody's a coach. You know, when I was studying in my college days, and I used to, instead of studying my lessons, my mass physics chemistry in Allahabad, I used to study chess. My father used to come and ask me, will chess feed you? In Tamil, he said, Sor Bodma. Will <laughs> Will just give you rice to eat. That's what he asked me. I couldn't answer. But now I think it does give. It feeds people, chess players. My grandson in America is now a chess coach, professional. He doesn't do anything. He just plays and teaches the coaches chess. So okay. like that, everywhere there are people who, because it's easy to coach chess. And you don't need a title or a permission from somebody to do something like that. Anybody can coach. Anybody can talk to anybody. So it's good. That's all because of the explosion of chess interest throughout the world. You know, it was, uh, I don't know, I do not know, I do not belong to the Capablanca Alagain time, but I belong to the Botanic time. We know how Botanic popularity became very good, then how Fisher's popularity exploded. In India, in 72, when you won the World Championship match, we were all benefited by that. Everybody in India was benefited, chess players. You just had more respect because of Bobby Fisher. Then after that came Anand. Anand also caused the chess explosion in India. And maybe even other countries too. Because Anand had the charm. He had a charisma. He was a, he looked great and he played great. Uh, sir, you have been uh, coaching youngsters for a very, very long time, sir. And uh, it must be very satisfying that you're guiding the next generation and how long we would like to continue and we would like to see you continue and guide more uh, people, sir. So, does that give you more satisfaction, sir, coaching the youngsters, even at this age? You are still passionate, sir. Um, yeah, I, I love to coach, to teach uh, children. And, uh, you no, know, every child is different. They're not the same. Some are, mm. some accept whatever you teach. Uh, some of them don't accept. They have their own views about oh. what we are studying. And some of them may be right. So, you know, generally girls, they accept whatever you tell them. But okay. boys are not like that. Boys don't accept whatever you say because they try okay. to improve and find their own way to do things. And they are both right. And uh, I've been coaching for now nearly 40 years, 40 years, yeah. but 40 professionally years. only for from 1990. Before that, I used to coach, but always free, never take any money for coaching people. Because okay. at that time, people always coach only without any, taking any money. Mm. And it was not professional also. You come to my home, I teach you something. For example, that Vijayalakshmi and Meenakshi, the two sisters, they used to come to my home, the same place here. Every weekend, okay. the father used to bring them to, they were children at the time, 10 or all. I used to give them a lot of uh, information about uh, technology, I mean, chess techniques. Because I had, I, as I told you, I, I studied Russian and German, and they had all many chess books in those languages, which I was able to use it for my children and also for my magazine, Chessmate. Because we, we have a beginner section in the Chessmate, and uh, we give them ideas. See, there are many motives in chess, like mm -hmm. back rank, double attack, pin, skewer. Excluding the enemy piece, so many things are there. Uh, tactics, and uh, yeah. if you, if you, if the players are familiar with them, then it's easy for them to play in tournaments and find such uh, such ideas in their own games. It will not be entirely new to them. 
India become uh, number one in chess, uh, has it already beaten Russia in terms of uh, the way uh, chess is being played, sir? Do you think? I, I don't get you. This sorry. Yes, no, uh, I'm asking whether India has become the the number one uh, uh, chess uh, playing nation in the world, or it's still Russia which dominates, sir? We don't know. See, so many people play in the un unorganized sector. See, do you know the success only when they go for uh, field rating tournaments? But there are hundreds of people who don't go for mm. field rating tournaments. They just, they're happy to play chess with their friends at home. Mm. They, they don't mm. enter the field statistics. There are mm. many like that. Many, many. Oh. Always it has been like that. There are always a section of people, you know, I used to say that everybody in India knows chess. Uh, mm. Everybody knows, but they won't call themselves chess players. Because they think chess means sister in defense, kings in defense, uh, uh, kings in attack, something like that. You know, all this uh, term, uh, terminology, chess terminology, if they do not know, they think they do not, they are not chess players, but they are wrong. Many people play chess. They, they know chess, but they may not know the technical words for things, but they know the ideas because they are not professionals. They don't go to school, school college to learn these things. They just learn by experience and they play very and they play very well. In the olden times, our Indian, our forefathers, they all they, they were not taught anything like that. They didn't have anything to, to uh, nobody to learn from. So they all invented their own uh, techniques, which you can still do. Yeah. I, I always used to think that some particular games in some people's uh, games are really extraordinary, extraordinary ideas. Like well, there was a game in which uh, Anand beat uh, Kramnik in Bonn in the World Championship match. A fantastic move, fantastic uh, sacrifice. He uh, sacrifices a piece and uh, incredible mate, incredible. Just cannot believe that such thing can happen and it is happening in a World Championship. That's because of his genius. And he's not the only person who's got genius. There are lots of other people also in the, our country, not only in our country, in other countries also, who are, who are the genius for the game. And uh, if they if they see games similar games played by others, it will help them to easily latch on to the idea when it actually happens in their games. But I don't think that Anand's idea in beating Kramnik in that match with the black pieces was uh, something extraordinary. I think he had to invent it over the board. Nobody taught him that, and like that, everybody does something like that. So that's what we have. Okay. The Sir, according to you, who is the greatest chess player, sir? According to you, your generation and all-time, all-time great. Who is the all-time greatest chess player? Very difficult to say. You know? Everybody is tempted to talk about people whom they know. I know Bobby Fischer. So, I'm ten... But even Bobby Fischer, I cannot say because I think Tal is as good as Bobby Fischer. Tal was an outstanding genius. Fisher was also a genius, but Fisher was a hard-working genius. He studied a lot. He prepared a plan and he used to spend the whole night studying chess, sleeping during the daytime. He had a different way of uh, uh, learning chess and exploring the game and learning new things. But as the Soviet system was entirely different, the all according to wrote, somebody will teach you, this is the the chapter, this is the uh, pen, this is the uh, back rank made, this is uh, like that. They rattle off all the themes that are there. There's lots of themes are there, about half a dozen themes, no, more than a dozen themes are there. Like, uh, and uh, if you know them, it's good because it's help you to think when you play in a tournament, you know, when, you, when a new situation comes, you may be able to associate these things, ideas with what you already saw in some somewhere else. But if you don't didn't see it and it happens, you still invent it. You're a genius. And there are geniuses everywhere, all the time. I see it even in small children. No, they mm -hmm. think and, uh, okay. and and the one thing they the, the great mistake we are doing is to play blitz chess. You know, blitz chess is about five minutes a game, five minutes per head. Okay. If children have to think for themselves what is what is the correct way to play, which is a which is a pitfalls, which are the pitfalls, 
which are the traps into which they should not move. All that you have to think, and thinking takes time. And at that time, you are telling them you have finished the game in five minutes. That's not right. But mm -hmm. but everybody likes to play with blitz because there's no responsibility. If you lose, you lose. That's all. But if you play a regular game and you lose, you feel bad. So that's why people like to play blitz so that if they lose, their ego is not hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Do you, do you suggest any changes sir, in the uh, in for the sport just going forward? Should it change or it's fine? Doing fine, everything is fine. Uh, everything is fine. I, I think it's fine now. I do not know how the government support is towards uh, uh, mm. sponsorship of uh, players. Uh, mm. During our times, it was very very difficult. You know, when a team goes mm -hmm. to a country, they have a regulation by which they will buy the ticket for them. And they used to buy only air India tickets yes. at the time. And uh, generally, they will not uh, release the OK sanction till the last hour. I know, the, I don't know, teams when you went to Delhi and the flight is, say, midnight of, of say, mm -hmm. one particular day. The sanction for that tournament is given only at 5 o'clock in the evening. Okay. The count of India function like that. I, I don't okay. know whether it's changed now much, but maybe they, mm. they still think. Once when I was secretary, I went there and I told them that this team has to go tomorrow. He said, forget you tomorrow. That's tomorrow is a lot of time. That's all this volleyball team has to go now. <laughs> so can't go in the next few hours. See... See, we don't have, they don't know that the sportsmen are under pressure when they go. They do not know whether they are going or not going. Uh, in 1989, when the children's team went to Puerto Rico, we had submitted, the, I was the secretary of the federation at the time, I, we had submitted the uh, proposal about four months in advance, according to the guideline. But till the day before that, they did not release the sanction. Then there was a D.V. Sundar. He was one of the managers of the team. And he took the children uh, and went to Margaret Alva's house. Margaret Alva was a sports minister at the time. Now she's standing for vice president. He took the children to her house. And, and as she came out to go to Shastri Bhav for her work, she saw all these children lined up, boys and girls, all young champions. They're all champions. And... He said, Madam, they have to leave today evening. We are not got the sanction. Sundar told them. And they are all national champions. But she said, is that so? I look into it and she sanctioned it. See, now oh, what does it give the children the impression? You don't have to be, even if you are a national champion, it's no use. Unless the minister says that you are okay. You are a national champion, you know. Yes. Yes. Because you have to meet the sports, uh, uh, sports minister and she or he has got to approve it. Then only you will go. Not your merit. It's a very, very bad uh, uh, thing that's happening in our country. See, in okay, okay. thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up, me? yeah, before we wrap up, one last question, sir. What is the message you want to give to youngsters who want to take up chess, sir? One message for the youngsters who want to take up chess. Yeah. You have to be truthful to what you study. And uh, you, if you think that you are really going to shine, take up. Otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise it's not worth taking up just. You have to be really... Uh, if you think that you can do well... See, I did well, but still I did not make good. I didn't become a world champion or anything like that. But I got a job because of that. And I got a job not because of the government, because of the private people. And I was employed in a private bank, which was later on nationalized, Indian bank. So there are many people in the world who are really very good, but they don't have proper backing. No, if you have a backing, go ahead with whatever you have. Otherwise, see, many chess players have left chess. They've gone for their private jobs. Job because it pays better, and you know that you are assured of the income that you are going to get. 
Here you don't know whether you're going to get an income or not. You don't know if you, you go and play in a tournament, you don't know whether you're going to win the prize, whether you're going to qualify for the next, next uh, step and uh, whether you get enough money. You spend a lot of money and are you going to get back that money? It all depends on how you perform. Everywhere it's like that. It's, sports is uh, it's a dicey thing. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. It was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we'll catch up again and hopefully, as you said, we get more medals in the Olympiad in Chennai, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Encourages people to chess, not to throw drives them away. When I was uh, national number two, there were, there were occasions when I was number two. The people don't, Aaron, it's no use. You are number two. You have to be number one. Then I became number one. They did not say anything. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> What do we get of okay. number one? I was nine times number one. What did I get? Nothing. Yeah. We are thank you, thank you, sir. Prize, first prize. Yeah, thank you, sir. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.